As China's real estate crisis deepens under new funding regulations, the nation is haunted by dozens of ghost cities. Skyscrapers shine on the vacant streets. These magnificent cities, originally meant for millions of people, now host only a few thousand residents each. Some are even abandoned, with only rats living in them. Sadly, that is just one of the signs of the real estate crisis in China, and the worst may be yet to come. But why were these cities built, and why aren't people living there? Let's start from the beginning. China's real estate crisis started like a game. The mission was to borrow to buy land, sell homes before they were built, and use the earnings to pay off lenders and fund the next real estate project. This lured in local real estate players, who joined the high-stakes game looking to benefit from the opportunity of a lifetime. But then China's president Xi Jinping stepped in. He introduced strict government funding regulations. The sudden change left developers in a financial confusion, with their debts piling up ridiculously. Xi Jinping's newly implemented rules restricted the financing of major developers. This move affected real estate companies and other supporting industries. These rules require companies to keep debts low, have enough cash, and maintain healthy financial ratios. Companies meeting the three rules can borrow more. But if they break any rule, their ability to borrow is restricted. By 2021, China's property sales were rapidly declining. Unable to sustain their business model, many developers went out of business. But this real estate crisis doesn't just affect China, but also the rest of the world. So what's going on with the property crisis, and why is it so severe? Picture this: the real estate sector plays a larger role in China's economy than in many other countries. Real estate occupies 25% of China's gross domestic product (GDP) compared to 16% in the U.S. Being a key player in the global financial markets, China's property crisis may have a ripple effect on the rest of the world. For instance, the crisis could affect international investors, supply chains, and the prices of goods. However, the main concern is its possible influence on international banks and investors. Why? Well. If China's property developers default on their debt or the prices of property drop, widespread financial instability is bound to occur. For instance, international investors who hold stocks and bonds in the respective Chinese companies could suffer higher default risks and declining asset value. All this has shaken the reputation of the property sector, which was previously considered risk-free. As a result, many ghost cities have popped up. In 2017, China launched the Rural Development Strategy. This move diverted a big part of the population away from the urban areas. The country ended up with many empty cities with unfinished buildings. The empty and incomplete buildings show that there's an oversupply of speculative property investments. These ghost cities represent an inefficient use of capital and unsustainable constructions that have propelled the crisis. Denny McMahon, author of the book *China's Great Wall of Debt*, explains that local governments tried to stimulate their economies by building more infrastructure and funding the property market. However, the move was too ambitious because most people did not want to move to a new and unproven city. After all, the government had developed rural areas to prevent the allocation of all jobs to the coastal cities. Ghost cities are located in regions such as Dongguan in Guangdong, Yujiapu Financial District in Tianjin. And Tianducheng in Zhejiang. These areas have had extensive development, but most of them remain unbought due to a lack of genuine demand. The ghost cities have no residents besides crows, rattlesnakes, and coyotes. However, some of the cities are still home to living people, thousands of them even. Can China solve this growing property crisis that could potentially go global? Well, it depends. Let's take a look at some of the main companies involved, such as Evergrande and Country Garden. This should give you a better picture of how bad it's gotten. The story of Evergrande spans a long period of time, from the good old days of high real estate prices to the unfortunate decline of the company after retail investors stormed its offices. Hui Yakan is the founder of China Evergrande Group. He built his real estate empire Evergrande steadily for two decades since the 1990s. Like other real estate players, Hui leveraged loans for real estate investments and cleverly utilized other people's money to fund his next real estate ventures. The strategy worked so well that it transformed Hui from a steel industry employee into the richest man in China. However, Evergrande got so deep in debt that the company embraced radical strategies to raise funds. By 2016, Evergrande was encouraging staff members to buy financial products from the group's wealth management unit to help fund property development. According to an Evergrande company document reviewed by Reuters, 
staff members were sometimes asked to spend about half of their income on such financial products. The involvement of employees in the company funding plans was just one of the questionable ways implemented by the organization. However, they couldn't fix the problem, and eventually, the company collapsed in 2021. At the time of its failure, the company was in debt by hundreds of billions of dollars. Fast forward to August 2023. Evergrande recently proposed to restructure terms for its offshore debt. The troubled developer has sought the U.S. court's approval of the plan. Evergrande hopes to alleviate its offshore debts and get the company running again through its proposed restructuring plan. But what if the plan fails? What if Evergrande collapses? If the restructuring fails and Evergrande cannot make a new deal with its creditors, it could stop its operations and sell all its assets. However, all that is nothing compared to what Country Garden is going through. In September 2023, Country Garden reported a loss of $7 billion for the first half of 2023. The company expressed its remorse for not foreseeing the real estate crisis market risks. Like Evergrande, Country Garden was once one of the largest real estate companies in China, and they've had it rough lately too. The company has missed payments on two USD bonds and is about to delay payment on a private onshore bond. And if they don't pay, well, the consequences will be bad, of course. These are just two of the many occurrences affecting public confidence in real estate buying. The fact that a company that seemed failure-proof is now facing a major financial crisis underscores how deep the real estate crisis has become. Do they have a comeback plan? The short answer is no. First, Country Garden has already signaled that it will default on its $186 billion debt. The company filed at the Hong Kong Stock Exchange that it will not meet all of its offshore payment obligations when due or within the relevant grace periods. Think of it like this. Country Garden has about 3,121 projects across China, which is four times greater than Evergrande. The company is also barely surviving in a crisis-hit industry, where many others are in the same situation. Being a massive company, Country Garden stands to potentially inflict more damage on the global economy than the high-profile default of China Evergrande Group. If you are wondering whether the situation can get any worse, well, it does. Analysts have speculated a potential domino effect, where the failure of a large developer could impact other companies in China facing huge debts. If this occurs, the immediate impact will be a broad liquidity crisis in the property market. An article by CNN Business termed the story of Evergrande's bankruptcy as just the beginning of China's real estate crisis. Published in 2023, the article goes on to depict how policy changes have compromised the real estate business model. How will these occurrences affect the rest of the world? For starters, this could be the beginning of a series of falling dominoes. Evergrande is China's second largest and most indebted property developer. If it fails, the collapse could potentially create a chain reaction within the financial sector, affecting banks and other organizations linked to it through investments and loans. All this could scare local investors and reduce overall consumer confidence in spending, which is a key driver of China's economic growth. This would then affect other companies in related industries, such as construction. A vicious spiral could be formed, and things would go downhill from there. China's government intervention might also divert other resources away from important sectors in the process of preventing the property crisis. While real estate has been a lucrative market, its reputation is changing. The falling home prices, lack of investments, and the slowing down of construction and development projects could cause long-lasting impacts on the economy. So what does this mean for the rest of the world? On a global level, Evergrande and Country Garden's failure might cause international consequences. Investors and financial institutions outside China could face huge losses, which might affect international financial markets. If those go downhill as well, other countries' industries will be affected. Another main concern for China's banks is a global risk-off moment for financial markets. Commodity producers such as Chile and Australia would not be the only ones suffering. The situation would affect financial centers in places like the USA and London. China's economic downturn could affect anyone who benefits as a supplier or end consumer from the country. So what can China's President Xi Jinping do about this? President Xi Jinping's philosophy stating that homes are for living in and not speculating on was one of the first blows to the property developers. Smaller companies were the first to face the inevitable challenges of Xi Jinping's new restrictions. And not long after, 
real estate giants began to collapse. China's real estate crisis poses a major challenge for President Xi Jinping and his policymakers. With the declining domestic and global demand, the government is permitting lenders to reduce mortgage rates to boost property sales. The China State Council Information Office has not interfered to prop up the property market. Similarly, neither the Finance Ministry nor the Housing Authority responded to any comment requests on the same topic. The Chinese government is now beginning to push banks to keep lending to developers. The goal is to allow developers to finance and finish the homes that they have already sold and ensure that they are delivered to the respective buyers. Whether this will work out in the long run is unknown. But President Xi is definitely trying his best to prevent the collapse. Should we panic over China's housing crisis? Well, only time can tell. But for now, the government's efforts will protect local investors. What does this mean for China politically? A weak Chinese economy could compel Beijing to reconsider how it pursues a rivalry with Washington. Managing the multifaceted U.S.-China relationship, which includes competition, cooperation, and shared interests, remains challenging. While China is often seen as a superpower, a struggling economy might change how other nations see it. This would certainly affect global politics and the policies of other countries as well. However, Analysts predict that the future is still bright for China despite the current economic challenges. Fu Linghui, from the National Bureau of Statistics, said that China has massive advantages in terms of a strong industrial foundation and areas with the potential to grow rapidly in the future. Luckily, China's history shows resilience, and there is no doubt that the country will rebound from the real estate crisis. However, it will take strategic planning and government policies to revive the property sector. The unsustainable borrowing by developers is a firm lesson to banks and government financiers to implement stricter lending regulations and effective oversight. With little government intervention, China may not resolve the issue completely, and too much intervention could make the government neglect other economic priorities. But the danger may pass soon. China's population and economy are still rapidly growing. It may take a while, but one thing is for sure. It's only a matter of time before the vacant ghost cities of China are fully inhabited and the property sector is back up to how it used to be.